What happened? How did you get hurt? How can I avoid it? Are you okay? Danger. Danger. Hi, I'm Jen Grover, and I've heard those questions for the past week with Just Cause, because I've mentioned very loosely that I suffered an injury last week and haven't shared a lot of details. On this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm going to tell you how I got hurt, what the details were, how I'm doing now, and how you can avoid this type of injury as well. Make sure you stay tuned until the end, because I'm going to share with you a couple of the videos I have planning for the near future. Let's get started. What happened? That's the question I face a lot this week. I've been reluctant to answer it, not because I'm embarrassed. We all make mistakes, mostly because I've been searching for the right way to talk about it and honestly, the stomach to talk about it. One thing I want to get out of the way before I jump in. I know that there will be negative comments about this video. That's okay with me. There'll be people who want to insult me and call me stupid or maybe worse. That's okay. I'm going to ignore them. I invite you to do the same thing. We know that the internet is full of trolls and the best policy is to not feed them. So go ahead and ignore them because really this is about me sharing a mistake I made so other people can learn from it. And hopefully we'll see lots of things in the comments where people share their own mistakes and we're able to learn and grow from each other. First, I want to thank everybody who's expressed their concern, their wishes, their prayers, their thoughts, all the nice things people have said to me over the last week. They really have meant a lot. It's been sort of a rough week for me, but I, I can't tell you how supported I have felt, not only by you, but by friends like my friend Don, who came up from Columbus to help me and the great folks at New Camp. So what happened? Well, as many of you know, after I picked up my new tab from Hay to See RV in Columbus, I headed straight for Timbercrest RV Park in Walnut Creek, Ohio. I had a blast. My maiden voyage was a raving success. I had so much fun, I decided to stay and work for my tab a second week. A couple days into my stay in the second week, I decided to take my trailer over to New Camp and let Austin fix a couple little things. He adjusted the door for me and installed the glass stove top. And also somehow in translation, my AGM batteries went bad. He replaced those for me. As I went to pick up my trailer, that's when I really screwed up. First of all, it was a bright sunny day and the hitch and coupler were in shadow. And you know, that can be really hard in the middle of the day when the sun's directly overhead to get it perfectly lined up. It's much easier early in the day, late in the day or on an overcast day. But on a cloudless day at midday, it's really tough to get a good view, especially if you're using your backup camera. I should have asked for help. That was my first thought, but I didn't. I just wanted to push through, get back. It was my lunch hour. I wanted to get back and um, begin working again. I had a lot to do. And so I forced it. Word to the wise, when you feel like you're forcing it, stop. If there's nobody to ask for help, take a break and come back to it. Rethink what you're doing relax, get a drink of water, whatever you need to do to clear your mind and make sure it's in the right mindset. The second thing I did is tried to nudge it. Now the trailer is usually on a wheel, a dolly wheel in the front, and you can move it around and adjust it. It wasn't on a wheel at that point. It was the, the tongue was resting on blocks. So I tried to nudge it with my hand and that's where things went wrong. My second lesson for you is don't put your hands where they don't belong. I mentioned it in my last video, but truer words were never spoken. I knew better. And I'm sure most of you are thinking, I can't believe she did that. It's true. I, I can't believe I did it either. I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. And when I did that, the trailer did nudge and it nudged um, and pinched my finger in the coupler, um, between the coupler and the ball actually. So immediately I knew I was in bad shape and I ran for help. Well, I walked fast. I took my um, buff that I had around as a mask and used it to put pressure on the bleeding. 
went and sought help. I ran up to the New Camp Courtesy campsites where my friend Steve and Karen had been camping. The first person I came across was Jess Mullet. He's the president and owner of New Camp RV. Jess immediately came to my aid. He took me to an employee, Brenda Miller, who was so kind and compassionate and took me to an urgent care. While I was on my way to urgent care, Jess took care of my dog for me, my dog Rocky, who many of you have met. Um, and as a matter of fact, my friends Steve and Karen texted me a picture of them with Jess and Rocky while I was uh, in transit to the emergency room, I believe. Once I arrived at urgent care, they referred me to the ER and I was treated. They stitched up my finger and sent me on my way. But my help wasn't done there. Brenda took me to get my prescriptions filled. Then she took me to get something to eat because I hadn't eaten all day. And then back to New Camp where I found that an employee from New Camp, um, Nate had connected my trailer for me so I didn't have to face that again. And believe me, I was not in a mindset that I was ready to connect my trailer at that moment. So I was thankful, I say, he was my hero for sure for connecting my trailer. Um, I drove my trailer back up to Walnut Creek where I was gonna spend the night Allison Stutzman, our beloved Allison from U Camp, actually brought me dinner that night. And then my friend Dawn from Columbus drove all the way back up after she'd just gone home a couple days before that so that I wouldn't have to be alone and to help me with anything I would need help with and then to take me to see an orthopedic specialist the next day. The orthopedic specialist found out I had connections with the health system back home. So he said I would be fine to wait until I saw a doctor back home, which I did today. And then I was on my way, spent the weekend with family and then home last weekend. I can't say how thankful I am for all the help I got from Dawn and from the folks at New Camp, from the folks at the Cleveland Clinic facilities in New Philadelphia. They were all simply wonderful. And even my doctor's appointment with my local doctor today was phenomenal. So I'm so thankful for something that went so wrong. There were so many more things that went right and I'm really just full of gratitude for that. How's my finger now? My finger's okay. There are no signs of infection and I spoke to the hand surgeon today and he doesn't believe I'll need additional surgery. There is what he called an open fracture and I am missing a little chunk of my finger at the tip, but they assured me they didn't think it would be very noticeable. So I'm really grateful because I thought it was going to be, when I looked at my finger after it happened, I thought it was really going to be a lot worse. Lesson learned, don't put your hands where they don't belong. Ask for help or take a break when you need to. And beware of hooking up at midday sun. <laughs> That's the story with my finger. So you might be wondering what's next? Is Jen still going to camp? I'll be honest, I was a little concerned when I left the hospital. I didn't know how I was gonna have the courage to reconnect my trailer, and thankfully, I didn't have to reconnect my trailer. But that, that fear or that anxiety lingered a bit um, and wondered how I'd even unhook my trailer at home. A friend graciously offered to help with that. But by the time I got home on Sunday, I decided I was ready to give it a stab myself, and I unhooked all by myself and I'm actually planning my next camping trip. It'll be fairly shortly, so there'll be some videos from that as well. Regarding future videos, the walkthrough video is probably gonna be delayed by a week or two while my finger heals up a bit. It's very vulnerable right now, and the extra bumping and moving of equipment and gear for a walkthrough video probably isn't the best move right now. But it is coming, it's just a little delayed. The second video I'm gonna mention is one I'm gonna be doing as a follow-up to my last video about the cassette toilet. Thanks for all the comments about that and the questions because I got some great follow-up questions, some from new owners who are just getting used to the cassette toilet themselves, and I'm gonna share some of the things I've learned, some of the questions they've asked, some tips and tricks for maintenance, and even start to talk about what does it look like when you winterize the cassette toilet. Not, it's not gonna be a tutorial, but start to have that dialogue. So there'll be a follow-up to the cassette toilet video coming up as well. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, the thumbs up button, subscribe, and then click the little bell so that you're notified when my next video is posted. I always appreciate your watching my videos and sharing, liking, commenting, all that you do to support me. Thanks again for watching this week and I'll see you next week on Tab Talk.